I just lean just in time. <laughs> okay. Okay, shot 8.30. Welcome back, everyone. And thank you for being here. This is ACI 1. Today, we are going to do chapter 5. Wow, halfway. <laughs> and this is class 6. Chapter 5 is very, 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 very a bit, I find it a bit difficult, very deep ideas. In fact, when I look at it, I need two classes. I need at least two classes. I'll try my very best to do, uh, to cover comprehensively. I can do a touch and go also if I want to. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, let's start. Without further ado, we are going to gather our mind here before we start and to set our motivation. So let's do the 10 breath meditation followed by setting our motivation. So just get comfortable. Close your eyes and just scan your body quickly. Make sure your spine is straight. Open up your chest and put a little smile on your face. And just bring your mind to your breath until you hear from me. Do the 10 breath meditation. Just watch your breath. Now bring to mind the being who is a manifestation of the ultimate love, ultimate compassion, and ultimate wisdom. See them appearing before you just by way of you thinking of them. They are gazing at you with love, smiling at you with their holy great compassion. Wisdom radiates from them, a warm glowing glow encompassing you in this light. Hear them say, bring to mind someone who is hurting in some way. Think about how much you would like to help them. The only ways that you have tried, you might try.
recognize how those worldly ways fall short. How wonderful it would be if we can also help them in some deep and ultimate way. A way through which they can stop their distress forever. Grow that wish. Grow into an intention. Now bring your mind back to your holy guide. They know what we need to know, what we need to learn, and what we need to do. And so we ask them, please, please show me that. Please guide me and help me. We are so happy that we have asked, and of course, we agree. Our gratitude arises and want to offer them something exquisite. We imagine we can hold in our hands the perfect world that they teach us to create. And we offer it to them, following it with our promise to practice what they teach us in the form of the refuge prayer. Here is the great earth filled with the smell of the incense, covered with a blanket of flowers, the great mountain, four lands, wearing a jewel of the sun and the moon. In my mind, I make them the paradise of the Buddha and of it to you. By this deed, may every living being experience the pure world. Dham Guru Ratnamandala Kamniyatayam. I go for refuge and am enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the highest community. Through the merit that I do in giving and the rest, may I reach Buddhahood for the sake of all beings. I go for refuge and am enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the highest community. Through the merit that I do in giving and the rest, may I reach Buddhahood for the benefit of all beings. I go for refuge and become enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the highest community. Through the merit I do in giving and the rest, I will become a Buddha for the sake of all beings. And may it be so. Bring your attention back here when you're ready. Okay, today we are going to do chapter 5 on samsara and renunciation. We are going to go into the main body of the three principal path. Remember the three principal path? The very first path is renunciation, right? So today we are going into the main body of these three principal path, renunciation. And we will cover three subtopics. Why we need renunciation, number one and how to develop renunciation too. These two we'll cover today for chapter five. And another one will be how to know if you have developed renunciation. So there are three subtopics, why we need renunciation, how to develop renunciation, how to know that we already developed renunciation. So one and two will be covered in chapter five. And the next one, the number three, the sub topic will be covered in chapter six. So just to give you an idea about the framework, what we are doing. Okay, we are learning samsara. Samsara is the cycle of life. 
uh, Sansara is a Sanskrit word. It's a Sanskrit. Eh? In Tibetan, it's called Kowa. K-O-R-W-A. Kowa. In English, it's cycle of life. It is the condition of being forced through the power of karma and mental afflictions to take on the impure parts that make up a suffering being over and over again. So the conditions, sorry, is a condition of being forced. You see, I underline the word forced. So it's not by your choice. Lah. Okay, we are forced through what? Through the power of karma and mental afflictions to take on the impure parts. So, so that means it implied to me that we can take the pure parts, right? So right now they are saying that we are taking the impure parts, this lousy body and mind. They are impure parts and they are suffering. So in Buddhism, we, we can break into not just physical and the mind, we are said to be, how should I put it? We have five hips. We are five hips, right? Five hips or five parts or five, the few words that they normally use will be five parts, five hips, five piles, P-I-L-E-S, piles of things, piles of stuff. So there are many things inside. So it's called five hips or five piles of things or five parts. So what are the five parts? You don't really have to know right now, but I just mentioned you will cover in later ACI chapter. We have the physical body, this one. And then the mental body, the mental side of four. Huh? The mental one can be bring into the feeling, the discrimination, the all other factors, and also the consciousness. All this we will cover in later ACI chapters. So I want to come back to this one again. Samsara is a condition of being forced, not by choice, through the power of karma and mental afflictions to take on the impure parts that make up a suffering being over and over again. And you see the word over and over again. It's a cycle. The Tibetan word korwa, kor means to go around. So you have to go again and again, go around. Yeah, go around. You can see this view of life here. The view of life. Okay, you can see that the big circle outside, the outer one. They are the 12 links, the 12 links in the view of life. And then the inner one, they got the three upper rim. The happier we call it the happier realm, three upper realms, which are the human realm. We are in the human realm, and then you have this uh, god realm and demigod. Okay, and then there are three lower realms, three lower realms we call the three misery realms, which are the animals that we can see, and then we have the hell realm. And then we have the ghost room, the preta. So it looks like, uh, you know, you will cover also in later ACI chapter that the higher realm, like the god realm, right, is not really that good because we just enjoy and use up all our merits. And then after that, we, we kind of like drop to the lower realm. So this is the wheel of life. So samsara is this wheel of life, this cycle of life. You know, you 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 are forced to take on this lousy body and mind that go round and round again and again, <laughs> again and again. You are forced to take on that kind of birth, that kind of dirty birth. You are forced to take on this dirty mind and these impure parts. By nature is the suffering. The nature is itself suffering because of the impure parts that we take. And you can see the inner circle got another inner circle, right? 
uh, you can see some beings going up, some beings coming down. And then there's a, the smaller circle. The smaller circle is the root of samsara. The root of this, the root, the root, the root of samsara. You can see there are three animals inside with the pig, the pig at the center that represent ignorance, our misunderstanding of our world, our misunderstanding of where things really come from, how things really work. Yeah. And from there, the mouth, from the mouth of the pig come out two animals, which is here will be the rooster that represent our ignorant like king. Ignorant liking where we desire something and we think the quality, the desire, something that we like, the quality that we like is in the thing, is in itself and by itself. And so we are willing to do something bad to get it. And that's plant the seed for us to cycle again in sansara. And then the other side of it is the snake that represents the ignorant disliking ignorant disliking we want to avoid something unpleasant or we have an aversion we have an aversion towards something that we don't like and we want to we want to get away from it and so we are willing with the ignorant disliking we are willing to do something to hurt another person we are willing to do something bad to get away from that and that plant another seed for us to see the suffering in our life. Okay, so this is the samsara. Here I want to read the, the definition. Okay, this is in your question one homework. Huh? They ask you to define samsara. What is samsara? The condition of being forced through the power of karma and mental afflictions. To take on the impure parts that make up a suffering being over and over again. So I want to mention about this. Uh, let me see. Yeah. I mentioned about the karma. Later I explain about the karma. Yeah, let me show you the next slide, karma. What is karma? They say the condition of being forced by karma and mental afflictions. The condition of being forced by the power of karma. So what is karma exactly? Karma is defined as the movement of the mind and what it motivates. We will study a lot on karma on ACI 5. So no worries. Eh? This is just, uh, it didn't come out in the homework. Karma is the movement of the mind. Movement of the mind, which is uh, the thought, the main thing. And then the next thing, and what it motivates. What it motivates, it motivates, it motivates your speech and bodily action. It motivates your speech and bodily action. Okay, so karma is the movement of the mind, which is the main thing, the driver, the driver. And then it motivates your what you are going to say and what you are going to do. So we come back to the definition and uh, come back to the samsara, the definition. The condition of being forced through the power of karma and mental afflictions to take on the impure parts that make up a suffering being over and over again. So now, what do you, you know, before I learned ACI, wait now, nah. Where the chapter Samsara is got talk about hell, the cycle of life. Yes, it does talk about hell in a later chapter. Thanks for asking. Yep, Ying. Okay, just as I mentioned about before I learned ACI, I thought Samsara is a place, you know. You are telling me about this suffering thing. So it's a place that I need to go. I need to leave this place and go to a place which is pure. That is what I thought. So what is samsara? Why we need to know? If we don't know what is samsara, then we don't know what you want to be free of. If you don't know, really know what is samsara, we don't know what to be free of, right? It's not leaving this place. 
you are samsara. Your continued existence in this form is samsara. Your continued existence in this form is suffering. And so when we say escape from samsara, escape from samsara means what? Means that we are to change our very nature. To change this very nature. That we are, you know, we are sick and tired of all these things. We don't want these impure parts. We don't want to take this type of dirty birth again and again. Okay, I like the thing that really make me wake up. They say, what is samsara? You are samsara. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the condition. It is the condition of being forced, right? This condition of impure parts, huh? forced by our karma and mental affliction. You are samsara. Your continued existence in this form is samsara. Your continued existence is in this form, is suffering. And so to get out of samsara means to change the very nature, your, the very nature of your form. Is to change your very nature. And that is that means to, when we say we want to escape samsara, Udana, let me see, there's a message. Sansara. Okay, very good. Sansara or samsara? I always thought it's samsara, but I heard Goshila say it should be sansara. It should S-A-N, right? We heard him saying, but in many books, even in the class notes and all these things, it's spelled as S-A-M-S-A-R-A. -A -A. Yeah, it's a, it's a small thing for people who are like mixed nut, maybe they want to be very accurate. It's sansara. For me, I don't care. I know. Okay, samsara, samsara, samsara. It's the same thing, okay? Thanks for asking. What happened to my screen? So today's topic is very heavy, yeah? bear with me. Yeah? Don't feel depressed. Huh? <laughs> Are you, I said Chinese New Year coming at you. Why this topic come at this time? <laughs> I said I need to quickly finish this topic and move into bodhicitta. <laughs> okay, so we want to learn this properly. Yeah? Okay, samsara, the cycle of life. Kowa in Tibetan. Let's look at the Tibetan word. Huh? Okay, let's look at the Tibetan word. Sakche, say after me. Yeah? Sakche for blessing sake. Sakche means impurity. Just now we mentioned about the impurity, impure, impure parts, impurity. Stain means stain. Sakche, nyelengi. Okay, nyelengi. Let me see whether I pronounce correctly or not. Yes, nyelengi means taken on. You are taken on by the force of karma. Pungpo. Pungpo, I know. Five hips, hips, hips. I always hear Kashila say pungpo. Yang ne, yang du. Means again and again. Yang ne, yang du. Again and again. Then pan means to take. That's what. Kowa, we know samsara. Yin, it is. I notice, huh? When you read Tibetan, you have to read the Bali one, you know. You have to read uh, from, from the back, <laughs> not from the front. You have to read. Kowa in, Kowa means samsara is, then blah, 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 things like that. Yeah, this one is too long. I don't to explain. Next time, if you take note, um, the shorter one you try to see, you read from the back, then you can get the meaning. Hey, this one, just for blessing sake, we read Sakche Nyanengi. Pongpo, Gyun, Gyun is a stream, I miss out the Gyun. Yan ne yang du, then pan kowa nin, means samsara, means the condition. Again, what is the definition? It is the condition of being forced, not by choice, through the power of karma and mental afflictions. 
fat thought, mental friction is your bad thought, to take on the impure parts, this impure parts, lousy body and mind that we have, that make up a suffering being over and over again. And that is in your question one. Before I learned ACI, I don't know I'm in samsara <laughs> until they tell me I'm in samsara. So I'm just like the kid in the prison. The kid in the prison, born from day one uh, in the prison. She doesn't know she's in prison. I'm like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Until when I, uh, when I learned it from ACI, then they tell me, oh, I'm in samsara. And I'm really struggling with that, with that idea, you know. Okay. So but I'm very happy by sharing with you today. I get a deeper understanding. I am samsara. My existence in this form, my continued existence in this form is samsara. And so when we say to get out of samsara, it means to change our very nature. To change from these impure parts to pure parts. From the impure parts to pure parts. To be reborn, we say liberation means to be reborn with the pure parts. Okay, now next one. What changed you in this cycle of life? What really changed you in this cycle of life? Okay, for blessing's sake, yeah, we learned this one. Le, le is a karma. We know le is karma. Le, nyun. Nyun, yeah. nyun mong. Nyun mong. Nyun mong is a klesha, mental affliction. Nyun mong. Le, nyun, gi, ching. Ah, these are only four letters easier to learn. Ah. You see, read from the back. Chain by bad thought and karma. You see, that's how we, yeah. They go the other way around, the ballet opposite from the back. Le Nyun Gi Ching. So what really changed us in this cycle of life? It is our karma and bad thought. What keep you in samsara? Our karma and our bad thought. Why we have bad thought? Remember, this view of life in the middle, what is that? Ignorance born out of ignorance. Ignorance is a root. Okay. So what really keeps us in samsara again? It is our own deeds, our karma and our bad thoughts. And that is what perpetuates us in this lousy body and mind that is going to rot So after we hear so much, huh? wow, that sounds very serious, man. To what exactly are we chained? We are chained to this, remember these impure parts, we are chained to this lousy body and mind. And we go circle, round and round, over and over again. What keeps us in this samsara? Our karma, what is karma? Movement of the mind and what it motivates. And our bad thought or our anger, jealousy, all those bad thoughts keep us in this samsara since beginningless of time. Are you then how to break free from this one? Huh? How to break free from this one? Remember from beginning, I mentioned the three principal path, right? Renunciation is the mind that wants to be free from the cycle of life. Number two, the bodhicitta is the mind that wants to become a Buddha for the sake of all beings. And number three, the correct view of emptiness is the mind imbued with emptiness. And there's some, some other words very important. And that is the antidote. And that is the antidote to the cycle of life. So how to break free from this cycle of life? The correct view of emptiness. Right? And of course, the renunciation. I want to be out of here. And how to do it? The antidote is correct view of emptiness. 
that is the one is going to break the wheel of life. No worries if you don't know. Like I said, we are only in ACI 1. Uh. We haven't learned the tools to do all these things. We will, we will learn along as we as we uh we will we will cover the correct view of emptiness in chapter nine, if I'm not mistaken, and then in many other ACI courses. So no worries. So right now, oh, I want to get the things right, get the framework, get the things where is it? Oh, this is from here, or oh, this is for this. So we say this is the will of life. We are chained. We are chained by our karma, by the power of the karma and our and the bad thought. And how to break free from this side? I said just now the three one, remember? The third one, what is that? The correct view of emptiness is the antidote to this cycle of life. How? How can it help me? How can understanding of emptiness help us break this cycle of life? How? So if you remember, some have some of you have heard before the two husbands in the kitchen, but many have, have not. Remember, half, half our class, they have never learned about seed. Nah. So sorry, I need to mention a bit again. But I think no harm in listening again. To be very honest, I like to replay the pen story and the two husbands in the kitchen again and again in my mind, you know. And I see when something happened in my life, I try to apply it and see how does it apply. So we want to, just now we mentioned the wheel of life, the circle of life, right? The samsara. We are like being chained again and again, again and again. How to break free? We say the correct view of emptiness is the antidote to the cycle of life. So now let's go to the two husbands in the kitchen. Okay, so um, you have this lady, working lady, very successful career lady. And then very capable, do a lot of stuff. Then when she wants to, after work, she needs to pick up her child, two children from school or from tuition center. And then she needs to buy groceries and come back and cook. She has to do all these things and she has to work as well. So one day after work, when she's about to leave and take the bag, then the boss say, hey, tomorrow you have to come one hour earlier. We have a very important meeting with our client. So you come one hour earlier tomorrow. Okay? So when the boss tells you like that, you cannot say no, is it? Like, <laughs> obviously, say, okay. So you make arrangement, nah. you, you pick up your children and then you tell your kids, nah. okay, tomorrow mommy eh, have to go to work one hour earlier. So I want you all of you to get ready one hour earlier. So get ready in the morning, wear your uniform, get ready and your bag, everything ready by 6 a.m. We, we have to leave by 6 a.m. Okay, understand? Nah? It's very important to mommy. All right. Then the child said, okay. The two children say, okay. Then the next morning, when you wake up, you want to go to work, you get ready, <laughs> rushing. <laughs> and then when you open the door, when you open their bedroom, the kids are still in their pajamas. And you're, oh my God, you're so angry, you know? You're so angry. And you say, you, 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 two of you are so stupid. Now. Who heard that? I heard it, right? The kids, yeah? I heard it, the kids heard it. The kids cry. I heard myself saying, you are so stupid. I plant the seed. You are so stupid. I hear it and I plant the seed in my mind. Okay. Then two weeks later, <laughs> two weeks later, oh, I worked really hard. My husband, he didn't help much, but when I come back, he gave me a very warm hug. It's all worth it, you know. So you're expecting a hug. So when you come back home, you're expecting a hug. Then when you open the door, then I say, you're so stupid. Uh. How can you do like this? I just opened the door. I didn't do anything. Hey, I didn't do anything. He scold me stupid. Eh. So our natural reaction is to go back. You are the one who's stupid. Eh. 
<laughs> cry now, everyone. You are the one who's stupid. So what happened? We plant a seed for us to see another mini samsara. We call it there are many, many, many mini samsara in our life. Many, many, many mini samsara. Same logic. Okay. So how should I react? Then you say, then how should I react? I didn't do anything. What? Okay. When you say, I didn't do anything, means that you are misunderstanding your world. Okay, there are two husbands. Why you got two husbands? One husband is when you understand, oh, why this husband is yelling at me? It's because I hear two weeks ago, I scold my kid. Eh? I scold my kid. So I plant the seed for me to see that. <laughs> then you accept that. Then you, you accept that you're quiet. You're not happy. It's not that you're happy. I'm not happy, but I can accept that. And it's finished. The bad thing finished. Purified nothing. Right. And that is where we use the correct view of emptiness intellectually as an antidote to the cycle of life. But if you don't understand, then I yell back, you are the one stupid that plant another mini samsara that I got more and more that kind of thing happening, that kind of thing happening in my life that people yell at me, people angry at me for no reason. I tell you one very interesting thing when I learned, I still remember how I applied that. Oh, yo, I remember that very clearly. I went to Taiwan many years ago with one friend. Uh, I chill her and it's all picked by Taiwan government. Very special, huh? everything sponsored by Taiwan government. Uh, so we went there. Huh? And then I, because I'm not very good in Chinese, ma, you know, and then every time I ask, oh, you see, it's good. You help me to write this, you help me to write that. I thought it's okay, never mind. Then one day she suddenly yelled at me, you know, really, you know, yelled at me. I was so, at that point in time, I remember, I immediately remember the pen. I remember the emptiness. And I was not happy. I just keep quiet. Then I went back to my dorm and I lie down quietly until that I feel better. Then I calm down. <laughs> okay. I know that I want, I don't want to replant the seed. I just let it be. Yeah, I planted that in a long time ago. With the understanding, with that kind of correct view of emptiness, you can break that cycle. If not, what you do will be, I should want to quarrel with her, but hey, what is the problem? Ah? <laughs> you may yell at me for no reason. Or, so damn angry, you know, she yell at me for no reason. Well, how dare you? Ah? <laughs> okay, But because of your understanding, then you just let it be. I went back to my dorm. I just lie down. I remember the pen. I said, okay. And then let it be. Then I feel something better. That I come down and then as usual, the next time I know, okay, she doesn't like me to tell like that. Okay, so next time I don't tell. And so even you, I don't, you don't like me to tell like this also, you don't have to yell at me, correct? You can just say, hey, you write on your own, you know? But she just bursts. Where does it come from? Hmm. <laughs> so you apply in our life is very interesting. Yeah, it's difficult. It's not easy. But it's very fun, you know. It's fun, you know. You look at it this way, you know. Sometimes things happen. Hmm, how can we apply that? It's very challenging. And if things don't happen, you don't understand yourself. And because things happen, you become better. You improve. You make progress. Okay, that is for the benefit of people who have never heard of the two husbands in the kitchen. So just now we come back to this now. We say, what changed us in this samsara where we have to take on these impure parts? We have to take on this dirty bird. We have to take on this dirty mind again and again, again and again. We are chained by our karma and bad thought. The only antidote is the understanding of emptiness. Like what we mentioned just now, the two husbands in the kitchen. Okay, you have yet to learn the two. Try. Struggling with that is a good karma. Try. Each time you struggle with that, you plan, you make progress. It's not that one day you can do it. Don't ever think like that. But if you don't try, you never improve. You will make progress and then you'll become better and better. Okay, just have fun. So we say the impure karma that we take impure body and mind that we have is just suffering right so you can see this is our mind our crazy mind <laughs> our crazy mind and then we have this impure body that have to get old that get sick 
that have to die. And there are many, many other suffering that we go through that we see in our life. And after a while, we think that it's normal. Do you know about this one? The frog in the pot slowly being boiled to death. And we think it's normal. I really like this picture. Okay, I like this question. Miss, but why sometimes bad things happen even if we do nothing wrong? Yeah, I didn't do anything. I'm so kind to the person, you know, and yet the person is so terrible to me. There's a time gap. Always remember, a bad cannot come from a good. The same thing for a good cannot come from a bad. That one you have to cook. Think about that. Okay. Can I, if I plant a mango seed and I get rambutan tree? Cannot. I plant a papaya seed but I got rambutan. Cannot. Right. So same thing. The nature must be the same. Good have to come from good. Bad has to come from bad. That we, we agree. Rambutan three come from rambutan seed. But why I do, I really do good thing there. But the person just yell at me like that. Yeah, you do a good thing. The person yell at you, they are not related. They are not related. There's a time gap. I plant a seed now, I don't get a tree tomorrow. I found I see some weeds coming out from the from the ground, isn't it? Hey, I plant this seed, what this one come out? Eh? <laughs> The timing is the timing. Uh, it is a timing. But if you, just now the person yelled at me, right? Because I understand that. Hey, I'm so, so kind. I work so hard, you know? I work so hard. I want to cook dinner. I go and fetch the kids. And he yelled at me. Cannot be, ma. You do such a great thing. You plant a very good seed. But when he yelled at you, when he yelled at you, it's coming from a different seed. Something that you did some time back that they ripen now. Is a come back to the analogy of the planting tree. When I plant a seed, it takes time to grow. Grand up. Take time to grow. So you know why we are struggling with this idea, but it's good to struggle with this idea. Keep on working with it. I worked for so long with it. And I said, hey, I, I cannot. Yeah, I asked the same question also. I asked the same question. <laughs> hey, not fair. And I'm so nice to the person and he's so bad to me. It is not related, not immediate the next moment. But we always, in our because of this impure body and mind that we take, this is all we can process. We can only see, I do this, then this thing. I do this, then this thing. You think they're related. Like this. They are not in this way. They are not in this sequence. It's not like one, two, three, four, five, six. It's not in that sequence. Yeah? It is not in that sequence. It's not that like I do this thing. I, I treat uh, uh, I treat Emerald nicely. That Emerald will respond nicely the next moment. It is not like this. I treat Emerald nicely. I plant a good seed. Sometime back, yes. Somebody is nice to me. But right now, Emerald is not nice to me. It's not my, it's not the immediate, it's not related to the, the action before that. To a certain extent, yes, it is influenced, but not 100%. Not, not, not directly, not directly. Okay, so we are struggling with that kind of idea, but keep on working with that and you will become better and better. Do I answer your question, Yap Ying? Okay, good. So we come back to this one, we say, um, and then we think that it's normal. We think it's okay. Everybody is also suffering. Hey. Yeah. There's a Chinese, everybody also got suffering. After some time, you find it's okay. Huh? I want to say, I want to say. Yes. Actually, I agree with the time gap. Actually, uh, me and my friend, actually, we 
quarrel and uh, because her small thing quarrel and feel like well, uh, I tell her I don't want to be friend with you. Then recently, uh, she take uh, she uh, uh, go Malaysia. She said, yeah, buy something back for you. Like, huh? I don't know how we all quarrel until no more friends is still buy something back for you. Uh. Then uh, in my mind, I also want to pressure at her. I said, I think I'm also in the wrong. Uh, I want to uh, buy, uh, give you a trick. Uh. Then we meet up yesterday. Uh. Then she give me a gift. Uh, give her a trick. Then we, we, we consult back. So I think there's really a time gap. Uh, you know? This yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, rejoice. I'm so happy to hear yeah. that. Thanks <laughs> for the beautiful story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, 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 because I treat her very nice. I was thinking why she's so petty, huh? <laughs> uh, small, small, so petty. But in the end, I realized that eh, she realized later that she's in the wrong, you know? So mm -hmm. there's really a time gap, right? Yeah. Okay, thanks for sharing. Yeah. Yeah, welcome. Oh, that is a very good example given by Angela on the time gap uh, that we can see clearly. Uh. <laughs> okay, They're not related. Now they're okay already. I'm so happy to hear that because I need that kind of seats also. Okay, so... You got, you got 10%. You rejoice, yeah. you got... Uh, you rejoice, you got 10%. <laughs> Yay, rejoice. <laughs> I want the 10%. Yeah. I rejoice second time, I get another 10%. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Okay, next one will be this one. I really like this gorilla, you know. <laughs> I really like this gorilla. We are like the prisoner. And then we get used to that. Huh? Okay, well, everybody is also there. <laughs> okay, if you are, if you never want to escape, uh, you will never escape. Agree or not? If you never want to escape, you will never escape. Unless you want to escape. So at the very least, uh, if you work to develop the wish to escape, then surely there will come a time when we do. Yeah. Escape from what? Means that I don't want this samsaric dissatisfactory condition. I don't want this dissatisfactory condition. The first thing we have to say, okay, renunciation means I don't want, I don't want this dissatisfactory condition. If you don't even say, if you don't even want to escape, then of course, surely, uh, you know, you will never escape. Right? So we need to learn one more uh, in the three principle path, verse number three. Let me make it bigger for you. I don't know whether you can see or not. Okay, verse number three. There is no way to end without pure renunciation. See? That is the prerequisite. Remember, I always say renunciation is a prerequisite. There is no way to end without pure renunciation. So, so why we need renunciation? Because if we never think that life is suffering, we never want to escape, then there's no way you can end the cycle of life, right? The first thing you must say that, oh yeah, I recognize that life is a suffering. It is a complete suffering. Everything about this life by nature is a suffering. And I'm sick and tired of this broken world. And I have a total disgust for this thing, even for the supposedly good things in life. Why? Because good things also ends. We have the suffering of change. Why? Because of the impure parts that we have. We mentioned that in class one uh, on renunciation. So there's no way to end without pure renunciation. That is a prerequisite. This striving for the pleasant results in the ocean of life. Ocean of life is this uh, cycle of life. Huh? It's because of their hankering life. What is hankering? Craving. Craving. Uh, is because of their hankering life as well that beings are fettered. Fettered means chain, your chain. So seek renunciation first. So seek renunciation first. So first thing, recognize that everything in our life by nature is a complete suffering, even for the supposedly good things in life. Okay. And then they say that if all beings are fettered, fettered means they are chained, do you imagine that you are not? 
Do you imagine that you're not? If, if they say that if all beings are fettered here, do you think you're not? <laughs> so they are trying to ask, okay, I just follow, I'm, I'm just doing the explanation for this para, huh? okay? Uh, don't be uh don't be depressed yet nah. it's not that it's not like that now nah. later on you will understand better D don't hold on nah. just hold on to that wow okay i always have honey period then over I think Angela is trying to say that all good things end, right? All those happy moments. We like to eat chocolate, eat a lot. Then we are not happy already. We say, want to go holiday. I want to see the beach. Then you go to the beach. You go to the beach. Then you say, you're not happy already. You want to go indoor. Then you go indoor too long. They say, you want to go and see the beach. Then you go to the beach. Yeah. They say, you want to come indoor. So these impure parts that we have is just by nature suffering. Yes, Angela, you want to yeah. say something? Yeah, I want to say, because I have a maid uh, that is uh, very good uh, for three years. Uh, huh? then, then, suddenly, then she go back, then she go back, then she tell me she want to come back again, but she never. Uh, so uh, uh, so uh, what I want to say that she's very capable, uh, you know, very capable, got compassion for my mother, all this kind of thing. So what I'm trying to say that uh, good things always come to an end, uh, you know. Good things. It may happen to me many, many times already until I realized that actually uh nothing is impermanent. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing yeah. so your now, experience. Yeah, so now I always treasure good times and better treasure because I know it's good, it will end, you know, one day it will end, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So we have renunciation yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah. Renunciation is uh and no, renunciation is it reject or come to an end of it? Renunciation is you don't want this dissatisfactory condition that we mentioned, the impure parts that we have, where we are forced in the circle of life, right? We are forced to take yeah. Uh, yeah. dirty uh, bird again and again. Uh, and that is renunciation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. We are forced to, so we have to stop it. Lah. Mm. Yeah. So no, no worries, don't worry okay. too much. Huh? Nah, they, they'll explain in detail uh, short after this. Okay. So bear with okay, me one by you. one. Yeah, okay. okay, sure, sure. So some people, they say, oh, if I want to reach Buddhahood, all I need is to practice this bodhicitta. I don't need renunciation. I don't need renunciation. Is it true? No. Renunciation is a prerequisite. It's the prerequisite that I recognize that life is suffering. Okay, and I want to be free from samsara. And then look around people around me. What about others? What about my loved one? Like me, they too must be suffering. Like me, they are also suffering. And you start to develop this compassion for them. You start your renunciation, turn out, turn outwards, turn to others. When your renunciation turn towards others is when you develop this compassion that you cannot bear to see them, you know, tormented by this suffering of life. And you start to develop um, this wish that you want them to be free from suffering and be happy. And so you need to have renunciation as a prerequisite because if, if you don't have renunciation yourself, if you don't know what is samsara, you don't know what to get out, what you want to get out of. And if you don't have renunciation, you're not concerned about your own suffering. Okay, How can you be concerned of others? What are the things that, you know, you don't know what to be concerned about? And you can't have compassion. So we say renunciation is a prerequisite. That first, I recognize that life is a suffering and I want to get 
out of this samsaric condition. And then I start to recognize that other people like me, they are also suffering also, isn't it? They are like me also, they are suffering. And I start to develop this compassion that I want them, I don't want to see them suffering. And so it developed this wish that I want to become a Buddha because I want them to be free from the suffering and I want them to be happy. So if you don't have renunciation, you don't even know what is samsara, then what, what, you know, how can you be concerned for other people, you know? Yeah, you know, so uh, that is the thing. So we say renunciation is the prerequisite. Even though we say that we want our, our goal is to reach Buddhahood, yeah, we need to have bodhicitta, yes. But we also need the, we also need renunciation, which is the prerequisite. So now the question already, you have question two in your homework. Question number two, they ask you, why is renunciation necessary to escape this cycle of life? So what I say just now, I say renunciation is the true understanding that you truly understanding that everything about life is suffering. And hence, you want to escape from this samsara. And if you don't believe that life is a suffering, you would not try to escape, right? If you don't think it's a suffering, why would you want to escape? And what is the relationship between renunciation and bodhicitta? Is once you have understood that you are suffering and that others must be suffering the same way too. This is when your renunciation is turned from yourself towards others. And these then lead to bodhicitta, the wish to free them from suffering and bring them to happiness. Okay, and that is in your homework question too. Okay, now so far this part, okay, now I finish this part. Okay, so renunciation is necessary eh, to recognize that, yeah, I, I'm like Angela, I'm disgust with all these things that I, you know, all the happiness eventually have to end. Even you have a loved one, eventually, either we go first or they go first, it's grief. Yeah, because of the impure parts that we have. So, and that is a prerequisite. And if we don't think that it is a suffering, we wouldn't want to get, we don't want to get out of samsara. Just like the gorilla in the cage, the gorilla in the cage. If we don't think life is a suffering, why would you want to get out? Just stay here. And then when you start to think about the people around you, they too, like me, they are suffering too. They have the impure parts. They are suffering. And your renunciation turns from yourself towards others. And you develop this compassion. You develop this bodhicitta that you want to reach total enlightenment so that you can really be able to help others in a deep and ultimate way. So that is the first part. Remember, we say today we are learning uh, the main body of the three principal path. We are going into renunciation. Why we need renunciation. And then number two, how to develop renunciation. Oh, that is very deep topic. How to develop renunciation. Okay, so I'm going into part two now. Part two. How to develop renunciation. Okay, we are reading verse 4a. Leisure and fortune are hard to find. Life is not long. Think it constantly. Stop desire for this life. Leisure and fortune are hard to find. Life is not long. Think it constantly and stop desire for this life. Okay, first thing I want to explain what is leisure first. What is the leisure we are talking about? There are eight leisure. You can see from here, eight leisure. The leisure means to be free, to be free of the eight 
ways lacking opportunity. Eight ways a person can lack opportunity. Opportunity to do spiritual practice. Okay, number one, we have not been born as a hell being. We are not in the hell. B, we are not born as a craving spirit, a preta in the ghost realm. Number three, we are not born as an animal. Three, why animal cannot think properly? Oh? We need to be intelligent in Buddhism. To study Buddhism, it takes intelligence. Number four, we have not been born as a being in the temporary realms of pleasure. It means in the God realm. Okay, why? Too much pleasure. We just enjoy and enjoy and enjoy and enjoy and use up all our good seeds. We don't want to practice. Okay, there's no reason for us to practice. So human realm, they say, is the best realm because we have uh, a little bit of suffering. <laughs> okay, not too much. Okay, not too much. Like the three lower realm, just on the top three, right? Too much suffering already. So much suffering, you cannot. What's you 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 just you're tormented by all this suffering, you know, you just, you, you're, you're so like, it's so unbearable, you won't be thinking of uh, practicing, just not able to think to practice. Too much suffering. So human realm, we have a little bit of suffering, but not too much. <laughs> and we have a lot of goodness also. We have a lot, a lot, a lot of goodness to be a human. So that's how we can practice. And they say, human is the best vehicle for us to reach Buddhahood. This vehicle that we have, even though it's impure parts, huh, it is the best vehicle for us to reach enlightenment. Okay, just now it's one, two, three is the three lower realm. Then four is uh, the temporary realms of pleasure, the God realm. We are not born as God. Number five, we have not been born in an uncivilized place. What is uncivilized place? We are not born in a place that people don't appreciate mor morality. You do something good, huh? people don't appreciate. Here, I consider in my country or in, 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 in the place that I know, we do appreciate morality. You do something good, people say you're good. Yeah, kindness is appreciated. Honesty is appreciated. Right? Yeah, your generosity is appreciated. So... We are very fortunate we are born in that. We are not born in that uncivilized place. And then number six, we have not been born with a serious wrong view. Serious wrong worldview. What is this serious wrong worldview? Which means that you believe that you can do anything. I can do anything. Lah. I can do what I want to do. They will not come back to me. And that is a very serious wrong worldview. Yeah. Then we have the number seven. We have not been born as someone who is retarded. Means your mind cannot think properly. Yeah? Or otherwise, physically incapable of studying the Dharma handicap. Yeah. Remember, we say in Buddhism, you need intelligence to study uh, Buddhism. To be able to have some way to distinguish good from bad. We know killing is not good. Huh? We know seeing is not good. Yeah. So, and the last one is we have not been born in an era where the teaching of the Buddha have not come to the world. So these are the eight leisures. These are the leisures will be not, not, not the sentence phrase in the not, 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 not. Very easy to remember. The first three will be the three lower realm and then go up to the upper realm and then go back to human. So five, six, seven, eight. I look at it as a human realm now. And you're not in an uncivilized place, not born with a serious wrong view, not handicapped or retarded, not born without the teaching, in a world without the teaching. Okay, so those are the eight leisures. Huh? You can think about it uh, when during your free time. Actually, it's not difficult, that one. And then we go for the fortune, leisure and fortune. Let's look at the fortune. Then fortune means that we... Is in the positive fortune is in the positive. Huh? You have the 10 uh, fortunate. Your 10 fortune means 10 fortunate circumstances. 
10 fortunate circumstances, inner and outer circumstances for you to practice Dharma, for you to undertake a spiritual practice. Okay, I read out to you. It's very much um, a little bit the uh, same like the uh, earlier on, but it's wider expanded. Number one, we have been we are born as a human. Yay, as a human. <laughs> B, number two, we live in central land. What is central land? Meaning a place where the vows of morality are followed. Yeah, we are born in the central land where moralities are followed. People keep their moral mor people keep their morality. Number three, we have all our important faculties, the ones that allow us to study and practice the Dharma intact. We have our eyes that can see the words. Huh? We have the ears, we can hear, we can listen to Dharma. Okay, we have the mouth, we can ask questions. We have all the important faculties we can write. Okay, we have all these things, all these things, all intact. Number four, we have never committed the five immediate misdeeds. We didn't do all these five immediate mistakes. Okay, the five immediate mistakes you will learn in later chapter, which is to kill father, kill mother, kill ahad, kill, try to kill, try to harm the Buddha, and causing schism, causing a split in the Sangha community. And number five, live in a world where the teachings are respected. Yeah, respected. Like here, even in Malaysia, uh, even though our official religion is Islam, but we are free to practice other religions. So we live in a world where the teachings are respected. And then number six, we live in a world where a Buddha has come. We live in a world where a Buddha has taught. We live in a world where the teachings still remain in the form of people having realizations such as seeing emptiness directly. Okay, we have a lot of monks here, a lot of, uh, we have Kashila. We live in a world where people are still actively following the teachings of Buddhism. Yeah, we have a very big Sangha here, yeah? people who are still actively following the teachings of Buddhism. And, and how many already? I count, I lost count. Okay, 10. We live in a world where people have compassion for others, which in this case refer to sympathetic people who are willing to assist Dharma practitioners and support them with what they need to keep practicing. They are very generous. People have compassion. I see that. Um, I see the people, uh, you know, in my place that any monk or anybody who want to practice, they are very generous. They just give, isn't it? People do retreat, then they don't. They give. So people are very compassionate and very supportive. Yeah, very supportive. So those are the 10 fortunes. Eight leisure, those are not, 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 not. And the 10 fortune, the plus, 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 plus. So we have all these perfect circumstances for us to practice Dharma. And it is said that it is very rare, very, very precious, and you're like the one in a million. You are the special one. <laughs> you are the special one. Okay, how special? Okay, let's see how special. Let us look at that. Let us look into how special we are. Let's see. Is it really that special? The this life of leisure and fortune that I have, so special, man. <laughs> okay, so I go and Google a bit. <laughs> I say that now, now you have this human life. It is so rare and precious. How rare and precious when I see so many humans everywhere. <laughs> we have eight billion of people in the world. The population is eight billion, more than eight billion. So I go and Google, and I can't find the populations of animals. I can't find the total population. And here I managed to get the domestic animals. The population, the number is according to the Food and Agricultural Organization of United Nations. There are approximately 23 billion chickens, 1.5 billion cattle, 1 billion pigs worldwide. Okay, so human only 8 billion. Eh? 
human only 8 billion and we haven't account and we have not account for animals on land, other animals on land. We haven't account for animals in the sky. We haven't account for the animals in the sea, right? And many other animals that we cannot see everywhere. So isn't it incredible? Humans only 8 billion, you know? So it's really very rare. I'm not convinced, okay? So they give you another classical example. Hold on, okay? Another example here. Okay, there's a classical example that says that this life of leisure and fortune that you have is so, so, so rare. It's like this tortoise. Hey, is this tortoise or what? Turtle. Uh? Uh, this is a turtle, a sea turtle. You know, a sea turtle with these floats. Sea turtle in a big ocean. Uh? And then, you know, the turtle are uh, once and only sometimes only once in a while he will swim to the surface, come up like that, right? Come up like that. Once in a while only. Lah. And then the chances, what is the chances of this turtle uh to what you what I let me see uh, to what uh to what uh? Mm, once in a while uh, for this thing when he swim up that time and for this ring. To happen to catch him around the neck. What are the odds? The odds are nearly infinite, isn't it? So we can imagine uh, the sea turtle in a big ocean. Once a while will come up. The head will come up like that. Okay. And what is the probability of the ring? The, the float, uh, the ring. Uh, when, they, when the sea turtle come up that time. And this ring just caught the... You know, the neck of this sea turtle. The float uh, caught the neck. What is the probability? The odd is almost infinite. It's, it's really like so, so, so rare, isn't it? The chances. So that is the chance that you are having here right now. So you're one in a million or one in a two million or one in a five million. Very, very rare. And very, very precious this life of leisure and fortune that we have right now with all the perfect circumstances inside and outside of us. So what they want us to do is to, they want to urge us to begin our practice now, right now. Right now, start your practice. And I find from the reading very interesting, one more thing very interesting I want to share with you. Uh, they say, this life of leisure and fortune is hard to find you know, what are the causes uh, that bring this leisure of this life, this human life of leisure and fortune? Guess what? The causes are extremely rare, which is keeping your moral life completely pure. Keeping your moral life completely pure. Interesting, huh? Okay. So we have to rejoice. Uh, we are here. We keep our moral very pure in the past. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I go back to this one, verse 4a. Uh. Leisure, how to develop renunciation? Leisure and fortune are hard to find. Life is not long. There are two parts. Uh. One part is leisure and fortune are hard to find. Just now we just cover what is leisure. All those negative ones, we don't. We are not like that. 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 We are not ghosts. We are not animal. We are not this one. And fortune are those of perfect circumstances we already have right now, they are so hard to find. They are so precious. That is part one. Part two, life is not long. Like this picture here, life is not long like the chaff of grain. So they want you to think it constantly. Stop desire for this life. What do you mean by stop desire for this life? Here, I find for you. Desire for this life means desire for happiness and fame in this life. Where you say to yourself, if only I could get more of the good things of life than anyone in the world. I want to get the best food, the finest clothes, the biggest name, and all the rest. And this is what you teach you. This is what you go after. And that is 
the desire for this life. You are giving up this one. Stop the desire for this life. That is the meaning. Doesn't mean that, uh, uh, not what we thought. Uh, so this is a proper meaning. This is a, actually they have a, another one which is a better explanation. Not to say better, it's a, um, that allow us to understand better. Okay, let me recap a bit. Uh. So the, we learned that we are moving into the main body of three principal path, right? Which is renunciation. And then there are three parts. Why we need renunciation, which we covered just now. Why we need renunciation. Why we need renunciation. Because we recognize that the life is a suffering and I want to get out of samsara. I don't want this dissatisfactory condition. Okay. So why you need renunciation? So if you don't think life is a suffering, you wouldn't want to escape. So renunciation is a prerequisite. Why you need renunciation? And then how to develop renunciation is the second part which we are moving into now. Okay, maybe what you say is, I can get a little bit. <laughs> okay, never mind. Tell me how to develop renunciation. Okay, how to develop that? And... To develop renunciation, there are two parts to that. Two parts. What is that? Number one, leisure and fortune are hard to find. They want you to contemplate, to think about it, that this life of leisure and fortune that you have now is so rare and so precious. You have all the perfect circumstances. And the chances to have this body of this human body is like the turtle, the classical example. Yeah. They want you to contemplate on that. And then the second thing to help you to develop renunciation is to think that life is not long. Like the chaff of grains that the wind blow and then it's gone. And for this partner, the second partner, life is not long. We have to meditate on the death meditation. I want to talk about that, death meditation. Don't be scared. Nah. It's not about what we thought, you know. I really love death meditation, I tell you. It transformed my life. Uh, let me explain the death meditation first. Basically, there are three principles in the death meditation. One, to recognize that Death is inevitable. That we all will die. Emperor die. Last time, all those big, big, powerful kings also die. Recognize that we all will die. Yeah, we say, okay, then I'm okay. But I don't think I'll die so fast. No? Because we always think like that. No? We say, yeah, I know you'll die. But I don't think we'll die so fast. <laughs> okay, that's one thing. <laughs> recognize that we will die. Yeah, I understand. Number two, recognize that the time of death is uncertain. Death is certain. Time of death is not certain. Hmm. It's not that every time we can live until 95 years old. <laughs> okay. There are so many things that can kill us and so few things that can keep us alive. I can relate to that. You know, there's a, I don't know what is the English word, like, you know. There's a poor sang fung. They say sometimes you injured your, a little bit of injury. Uh, if you don't go and see doctor, don't know some infection and you can just you will just die you know yeah so so many things small small thing can kill us ah. so the time of say again ah, death is certain time of death is not certain and when we die nothing can help us except the dharma nothing can help us except the dharma and then they go into the meditation ah, on very interesting you have to uh, visualize that you're looking at your own corpse, your own body. You're, you're dead already. You're looking at your own body. And then all the things that you accumulate, uh, your money, the, the, the fame, your asset, your possession cannot help you. That's part one. 
that's the first visualization. You notice that all the house, the money, your career, your fame, everything cannot help you. It is a visualization, you know, they actually look at, oh, you yourself are going, like, look at your own body. Then the second one will be your loved one holding your hand. Oh, they cannot help you. They can only sit next to you and cry and hold your hand. That's all they can do. They cannot help you. You have to walk this path on your own. There's a Chinese word that say, you come on your own and you go also on your own. <laughs> and then the three, the third one will be, even this body that you love so much cannot help you. You spend so much money to take care of your, you take so much supplement and all this, they exercise. That thing also cannot help you. I death meditation actually transformed my life when I first learned about death. I actually cry, you know. Oh, you, I tell you, I do my own death after teacher, after uh, all these things that I went and do my own meditation. I actually really cry and cry, and it actually struck me, you know, what is my priority in life? And it helps me a lot because I learned to prioritize what is important to me right now, and then I write my will. And then I'm happier after that. You get ready for that and you're happier. You know, there's a there's this uh, death meditation in the market, uh, which is not the correct one. Uh, our lineage, we don't recommend. Uh. They actually reenact. Uh, they're actually trying to like act out death process, which is very bad. It's make you like very terrified. Well, one time my friend brought one, don't know, one uh, sufu from Taiwan and then they do some of our friends attend the death meditation. And, wow. The, the, they go into the coffin, you know, to experience it. I said, what? This is not what our lineage taught us, you know, because we don't, it's, it's not, uh, we don't want to like feel nervous or terrified. That is not our intention. Our intention of going through the death meditation is positive. It helps us to understand better priority. And then we prioritize what is important in our life. Yeah. What is important to us? Nothing can help us except the Dharma. So we don't do bad things uh, for our family. Don't do bad things for our kids. Don't do bad things for our loved ones. <laughs> because why? They cannot help us. Only the thing that you do follow you like the shadow. Actually, I love the death meditation the best. I, I didn't... Yeah, if there is a class on that, that will be perfect. If you, if you have a chance to attend, I strongly recommend that. Okay. It is, uh, I like to look at it in a positive way because I find that uh, after learning about this one for the death meditation, in fact, it helps me to become happier. You know, and you're ready for that because you appreciate every moment. You talk to the people around you nicer. You know, then... Uh, my children also talk to me nicer. Also, I talk to them about that, you know. Then they are initially, so they say, oh, they cry. I also cry. I say, don't cry, you know. We just get ready. Everyone will go, you know. Just like it's good to talk about that. But in our culture, in Asian, we don't talk about this, right? They say, hey, sh 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 chai, <laughs> But I talk to my kids, huh? and then after that, we accept that. In fact, we are happier because we are ready and then we are so nice to each other and we treasure each other so much. We appreciate every moment of life and we are so thankful and so grateful. Yeah. And so I think it is, uh, if you look at it that way, it actually helps you, isn't it? Instead of like, maybe if, if I never tell this thing to my kids, then maybe they talk to me very harshly and then they regret when I die, you know, and then they plant very bad seed, isn't it? By knowing that I could live, anybody could live, then we appreciate the time that we have right now. And we treasure. We are nice to each other. Okay, so I hope I don't I don't frighten you, ah. Huh? <laughs> huh? Well, I hope that is okay. I don't frighten you, ah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Actually, I I like the death meditation also. Oh really? Yeah. I guess she might nice. care, I guess she might care. I like it also. Oh yeah, great. Yeah, nice. Yeah. I can't find the video, no. The last time I, I used to do meditation on that, but now I can't find the, the video. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I also love that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. I don't know which I can try to find. If I find it, I send to you. Otherwise, I'll try to ask ACI. Yeah. 
that is really a yeah. very good one. Yeah, what Angela said, I, I go through that. I really love that so much. Yeah, we be, yeah before that, I was very scared of death. That after I, I uh, yes. meditate on that, uh, I feel that not, not as scary. La. Just yeah. to feel that your teacher is beside you, it won't be so scary. La. Exactly. Yeah. Just also when you talk about death, I'm very scared. I think by learning this, oh, medi death meditation in Dumbrin 24. Nice, nice. See? Emerald already fine for us. Thank you so much. So if you have a timer, uh, you can watch that. And I hope it also helps you. I don't, I'm not sure that whether this is the one. That I, oh yeah, I attended one. It's the Lama Sarani one. Death meditation is also very, very good. Yeah. Okay, let me see. I got five minutes to go. So I come back to this one. How to develop renunciation. There are two parts to that. Leisure and fortune are hard to find. That's the first part, which you have to meditate. And then you meditate on the next one. Is life is not long. And when you do that, you will be able to develop this renunciation to stop the desire for this life. I thought, uh, yes, we are right. Yeah, you go to knowledge base and find. Okay, this is come out in your question three. Eh? Question three, they asked you two of the steps of the path are meant to stop desire for this life. How to stop desire for this life? I mentioned just now the two. Number one is to meditate. Meditate on the importance and difficulty of this life of leisure and fortune that you have right now. And then number two, to meditate on the impermanence of this life. That life, that death is inevitable. We can die anytime and all those that we accumulate cannot help us. Only Dharma, nothing but the Dharma can help us. Okay, so I... Um, this two meditation will help us to get rid half of our desire. One half of our desire is wanting the good things in this life. And then the other half is wanting good things in the next life, which we will cover in chapter six. We will cover that in chapter six. Um, I have a little bit to finish this one. I haven't finished. I still got a lot of slides. Huh? I want to finish a little bit only. I think I better not. Two minutes. <laughs> I don't want to rush. <laughs> uh, okay. Angela say, how Dharma can help us. What we are learning here, help us to understand how we create this samsara. Just now remember, we just learned how we create samsara. Our karma and our bad thought. Right. And the root is the ignorance, the three animals in the middle. Right. And so if the antidote is antidote, the emptiness is the antidote for us to cut this cycle of life. How? How can emptiness help us? Remember the story on the two husbands of the kitchen in the kitchen. Keep on replay that how we are creating our samsaric condition. Now we are how we are creating the samsaric condition, these impure parts that we have. And so we will cover that in greater detail how Dharma can help us in the next class because there's one part on the eight worldly talks very 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 interesting yeah if you go into detail on the eight worldly talks it's very interesting i don't want to just uh, go through like that you know i would like to go a little bit into detail yeah on what we mean when we stop desire for this life actually i think so don't worry actually uh, uh, sometimes the words are too strong uh, i find that the words i just i have to follow strictly according to the lineage uh. But actually, when you say renunciation, you're actually renunciating the eight worldly thoughts, which you'll cover in the next class. The eight worldly thoughts that, you know, all these things. Yeah, it's your mental attitude. 
it's not that oh you study this one oh I don't want I don't want to go to work I don't need to earn money I don't want the house I don't want the car not in that way renunciation is not like that okay that is not renunciation can you live luxuriously and have renunciation yes it's your mental attitude and in fact you if you truly understand you'll be happier because you're not creating the causes for your suffering without us knowing it we just our natural reaction is creating the samsaric cause for us to have these impure parts to cycle in this samsara and this cycle of life okay what is that i cannot see uh, the words are uh. Oh, somebody already sent the link. Thank you. I don't know why it come out this way. Thank you so much. All of you very helpful. Okay, we will continue in the next class. So let's do a dedication. Just close your eyes. Think of the goodness that we have just done, like a beautiful gemstone that you can hold in your hand. Recall your holy guide at the beginning of your class. See them there. They are so happy with you. Offer them this beautiful gemstone of goodness. See them accepting it. Bless it and carry it back into your heart. Feel it there in your heart. Feel so good that we want to keep it. And so we want to give it away. We want to share with others. By the power of the goodness that we have just done, may all beings complete the collection of merit and wisdom and thus gain the two ultimate bodies that merit and wisdom make. Use three long exhale first to send out to the person at the beginning of the class that you want to help. Second, to send out to all your loved ones. And the third, to send out to everyone that you have seen, everyone you have heard of. See them all filled with this goodness because of the ripples that you made. You now bring your attention back to the space here. When you're ready, just open your eyes and rejoice. Be very happy that you are here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. 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 Thank Actually, I always think that, uh, let's say, if we learn Dharma, so we jump out of this, we get out of this samsara. So you say that even we die, huh, our mind will be free, like, is it? You mean after we die? Uh, let's say we okay. go, get out of samsara, huh? so mm. after we die, our mind will be free, is it? Well, that will be answered in the later class. Stay tuned, Angela. <laughs> Keep on coming and another few more lessons. You ask that question okay. again. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's late. Right. Okay, sure, sure. It's late. Okay. I'll not pick up your time. Anyway, yeah. have a good night. Rest. Good night. Thank you so much for today. Good night. Bye-bye. 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 Bye, teacher. Yes. I just want... I wanted to ask, uh, so I uh, understand like for this class, the meditation is due on the leisure and 
and the other one. But what about the lesson, uh, the, the first lesson? We're supposed to do meditation also, right? Yes. You, you're um, referring to the, the meditation for the homework. If I look here, hmm. they only ask us to do the meditation on the eight worldly thoughts, but we have not covered yet. So if we have not covered yet, you can do the analytical meditation on renunciation or do the one that we have just learned to bring to your mind how precious this life of leisure and fortune that you have. Yeah. Okay. And okay. you can also do the meditation on life is not long to think about that, to contemplate on that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, then what about the previous uh, homework one? Like uh, like for homework one and two, I remember yeah. it's uh, it say meditation, but I but I don't know which meditation to do. Oh, um, you're very lucky that uh, if you can see that from homework one all the way to homework four, they only ask you to do the same thing, which is on renunciation, and that shows how important renunciation is. You know, you can see okay. homework one, two, three, four. They only ask you to do renunciation. Okay. Is there any uh, particular steps that we need to do or just contemplate on renunciation? La? Just contemplate on renunciation, what we have learned and then just bring to mind, what does that mean? You know, things like that. What do you mean by that? You know, and you keep on, oh, okay. keep on trying to think, is it this? What do you mean by that? What do you mean when I renunciation? What do you mean when I have renunciation? You know? Oh, okay. Yeah. Understand. Yeah. Okay. okay. And thank you, Dick. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Okay, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.